Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this AI generated effect using Photoshop and After Effects. What is up? I'm Tyler Casey, and you guys have probably heard about Photoshop beta and everything that's been going on with it. You've probably seen all the Instagram reels and TikToks of people using generative fill on their videos. And today I wanted to walk you through on how I use generative fill in this video that we made. It was a collaboration post with Aperture. We did a behind the scenes clip with it and I did all the VFX in After Effects and in Photoshop. I'm gonna walk you through pretty much the basics of how I did it. If you guys don't know, Photoshop has dropped a beta with generative fill and it's amazing. You can expand your scenes and you can do all sorts of crazy things. You can do all sorts of crazy things in the video world because Photoshop works so well in between After Effects and Adobe Premiere. So the possibilities are really limitless and I use generative fill, but I gave it prompts to create random objects in my scene. And the way it works is it's really cool because it will analyze your scene and let's say I say add a stone statue. It will literally add a stone statue with the type of lighting and it will fit into my type of scene and it'll look like that stone statue was really in there. Sometimes it takes quite a few tries to get it right, but eventually you're gonna get some really good results and you'll be surprised how good it actually looks. I actually got inspired from the homie Coffee Liquor. He actually made a whole video on this and his clip was insane. So definitely go check that out. When we shot this, we had a strobe going because we wanted to feel like it was flickering. Looking back on it, I would probably leave the light on for at least like three frames because I felt like having the image on screen for about two to three frames was the sweet spot where you could kind of see the difference. If you're going every frame, it feels too fast and too flashy. You could even go longer. And my last tip when shooting is make sure to try and use a tripod because it's gonna save you a ton of work. We did this on Steadicam. I'll show you how I lined it up. Um, even Herman's example, he looks like he has a tracking shot. So it looks a lot more dynamic. There's a couple things you need to make this work. So the first thing is Photoshop beta. You just need to download Photoshop beta. If you have the Creative Cloud, you have access to it. The second thing I like to have is Video Copilot console. You can quickly grab those screenshots out of After Effects and just drop them into your timeline pretty quickly. So, but so let's find where this effect starts. So let's, I'm gonna move, uh, if you use page up and page down, that's how you can move frame by frame. Let's say I want it to start right there, right? So I'm gonna hit Control, Spacebar. If you've installed this, you can take a screenshot and you just click export, say PNG. So I would make a specific folder for all your PNGs and I'm gonna name this one 001 and hit enter. Then we're gonna open up our Photoshop. Hi, and I'm Anna McNaught. So grab the lasso tool and select what you want to change in your scene. And now you're gonna have to come up with a prompt and coming up with prompts is one of the a tricky thing. Some prompts that I found were pretty, I really like adding sci-fi or futuristic to anything. It gave a really cool look to it. Um, you could try medieval. I uh, Some des descriptive words help a lot, as well as like I did a lot of things like stone statues came out pretty cool. I would definitely just try a lot of different things and just think about what you're trying to change. Generative fill, and then you could type in whatever you want. If you don't type in anything, it'll probably just do its best to get rid of the object that you have there. And sometimes that is useful even in this case. So I'm gonna try, let's try, I'm just gonna type in dresser. Let's just say we wanna turn this into a dresser. And we can actually hit this to see them. So we can click through them, that's really creepy. Um, yeah, we didn't get anything good. These all look cursed. Um, so I'm gonna scroll up, I'm gonna try sci-fi. Um, I'm gonna say sci-fi fridge. You can also add descriptive words to things and you can really just try a lot of creative things. Sometimes I would sometimes I would get the image on the first try. Other times I would have to try at least 20 different times to get something. Um, so I mean, that looks pretty cool. It's a little blurry, but it's so quick, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can see sci-fi has all sorts of like crazy colors and whatnot, but it definitely, if that's what you're going for, you can definitely create that. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not mad at that. I would maybe try it a few more times. I don't know if I'd use that one. Um, you totally could, but I mean, I'm not mad at that. I think I've gotten better results with it. Um, it really just depends on the frame and you just have to keep trying different things. 
Um, you can get multiple results multiple times with the same prompt. But uh, from here, I would go ahead and I would hit export. Um, I was just doing PNG again. We could create a final folder. So final AI PNG exports. We could create an export folder and then I would keep the same name as 001. I would save that. Then I would hop back into After Effects and we're still selected on the same frame. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag on that 001. And then I would hit Control Shift D I would move forward a frame and hit Control Shift D, delete those. So now we can see if we move forward a frame, the light flashes and that appears, but then it's gone. So what I would do here is I would hit Control D and I would duplicate that. Then I'm going to hit G on my keyboard to draw a mask where you click that little guy right there. And we're just gonna draw a simple mask and let's move it off his body a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard and I'm going to hit feather. So now I would bring on Lumetri and let's try and match these colors, right? So like I said, bring the highlights all the way down. So let's see the difference with that. We can still see it's pretty much of a big difference. So if I bring down the shadows and make it a little contrasty, I think we're in better shape. We're getting a little bit dark right there so I can maybe bring that in and I could even feather it a little bit more. And maybe I'll bring the shadows up just a little bit. If you add camera shake and glow like I did in mine, it definitely hides a lot of these mistakes. So then I would do this again for the next frame. So here's the last frame. I would leave it there. So we would have it for at least three frames. But you can see my camera is kind of wiggling. So what did I do to try and make it look like it was locked on? I don't know if this is the best way, but this is what I did. First, you have to invert your mask. So we have to be able to see everything else on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my Lumetri. The frame that we bought in Photoshop, you do not have to do this for because that is the exact frame with the exact same lighting. You don't have to touch that one at all. If you're on a tripod and you have constant lighting, you don't really have to do this, but we made ours more dynamic and I didn't have the light strobe at the correct time. So I had to use some Lumetri and I had to use these tricks. Um, so to line it up, what I really did is I zoomed in here and I hit T on my keyboard, turn the opacity to 50 and you can see, I would just zoom in right here and you can really see, I would toggle this on and off. So I would use my arrow keys and I would bring it down and I would bring it right and I would turn it on and off. Maybe I bring it down some more, bring it right. And I would basically go until I don't see that much of a difference of the change. Maybe the lighting is obviously changing, but I think we're in good shape. So then what I would do there is I'd turn back up my opacity, I'd hit mask, I'd re-invert it, boop, and then I would turn back on my Lumetri. And I would do that for every clip if it was moving. Uh, by the end of my take, it wasn't the, the camera wasn't moving so much, so it wasn't that bad. I definitely would recommend using a tripod because then you would just have to mask and then you really wouldn't have to do that much work. You would have to mask because if your subject is still moving on your scene, but everything else is changing around them, if your subject's moving in your scene, but everything else is changing around them, you can't really recreate the same thing twice currently in Photoshop beta. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to go follow us on Instagram where we posted that clip. Uh, if you guys have any questions or want to see anything else with Photoshop beta, I got a new camera set up. I just wanted to throw this up and record a video. Let me know what you guys think. I haven't been on YouTube that much. Hopefully I will be getting back soon. Just been busy with Cinepax. Uh, follow us there and we've been posting a lot there. So follow us on Cinepax on Instagram. I'm Tyler Casey with Cinepax. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.